Land Rover four-wheel drive vehicles, including the luxurious Range Rover, share a unique heritage. For over 40 years, these British-built vehicles have been put to the test in some of the most rugged and challenging terrain in the world. With a reputation for off-road performance, it's not surprising that Land Rover provides an opportunity for its owners to learn how to get the most from their vehicles in a unique off-road setting. The Land Rover experience is conducted at a purpose-built center on the Land Rover factory site in Solihull, West Midlands, England. The popular center opened in the summer of 1991 and is booked many months in advance. Typical courses include classroom orientation, vehicle familiarization, and four-wheel drive techniques demonstrated on a jungle track and a series of man-made obstacles. The Land Rover Experience tracks simulate the demands and conditions placed on driver and vehicle in a variety of off-road situations. In fact, Land Rover is the only manufacturer to offer practical hands-on training from expert off-road instructors. The same instructors who've trained various teams from around the world for the annual Camel Trophy Endurance event and numerous expeditions. Bring the main gear selector back into that first gear situation, making sure you're holding the vehicle either on the handbrake or the footbrake because it's such a massive reduction, low range, the vehicle's ready to move straight away. As soon as I release that brake, away we go. I'm just covering the accelerator at the moment. We're going down a mild slope into some water. There's no need to cover the brake pedal at all. We're in first gear, low range, and that's holding nicely. Let the vehicle levels out. Give the gearbox an opportunity to go into a higher gear. I've moved the main gear selector now to the third position. You're giving the vehicle the opportunity to go into a higher gear because if you remain in first gear, low range, on a slippy situation, you can actually provoke wheel spin. So that's the reason for giving it the opportunity to go into second or third gear. It might not have taken that opportunity. Take note that my thumbs are on top of the steering wheel rim. Do not wrap your thumbs around the rim like that, because if the wheels hit an obstruction, your thumb is going to take the full force of it. So thumbs nicely out the way on top of the steering wheel rim. And once you're happy that the vehicle's leveled out in the water, not too much speed, just create a slight bow wave in front of the vehicle. And if you've established this a slippy sort of surface under the water, be prepared to move that gear selector into the second gear position. Left at the bottom please, then immediately left again. And then choose an opportune moment, slow it down a wee bit, then come into a higher gear. Give it the opportunity to go into a higher gear. Good. Left, taking a wider sweep as possible. Square up onto the hill as soon as possible. As the front wheels go over the crest of the hill, think of turning to the right. Square up onto the hill, a little bit of gas, keep it moving, keep it moving. Now to your right, good. And you can see now what's happening with that suspension. And the bodywork is virtually level. The suspension, the long travel suspension, is absorbing all that movement. So you're keeping good contact with the ground. Consequently, you're getting good traction, good wheel grip to the ground. But that body is virtually level. And you, you don't appreciate what's happening to the suspension. These lads that are driving are all members of our demonstration team. We've, we've got four drivers employed full time on this. Uh, and having it on site is very useful, of course.
Just as slowly as possible. Really, it's a case as slow as possible, as fast as necessary. And it seems to be a direct contradiction. <laughs> but uh, that's the way we want to be. And we're getting a nice smooth ride now. It's just got to remember that. As slow as possible, as fast as necessary. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a worthwhile one. It is. The next obstacle that we're going to go to is the, the steps. Uh, one set of wheels, the left hand side initially are going to be on the steps, the right hand side are going to be on a smooth surface. Two very contrasting surfaces with obviously a steep climb. The initial reaction is to hit the steps with speed, but it's like driving up a curve. You could finish up finish with square wheels, hitting it at too high a speed, but by the same token, if the speed is not sufficient, you'll fail to maintain forward momentum. So, Actually, it's the ideal speed we're looking for. You've got to get the feel for it. Located 50 miles south of the factory in the rolling English countryside, East Nor Castle is a family-owned residence built in the early 19th century. Specialized Land Rover Experience courses that extend beyond a single day frequently utilize the renowned off-road test track on the estate grounds. I think it's a marvelous experience to get over here to you know, where the cars were created and see where they were created. Particularly getting here on the castle grounds and going out over the track and some of the type of land that they were originally or the terrain they were uh, built for. It's an experience. It, it, it's the best I can really say and I think the title says it all. You get exposed to the vehicle in uh, condition. You get with people who are experts in their field in handling this type of vehicle and they impart a certain degree of knowledge. Uh, I have an awareness of the vehicle I never had before. During the Land Rover experience, American participants have the opportunity to drive other Land Rover vehicles not currently available in the United States. The famous British SAS military assault teams, as well as the international teams of the Camel Trophy competition, have used the East Nor Castle estate for training. While the East Nor Castle estate has plenty of rugged terrain, it is still a real castle, and a hearty English lunch is the crowning touch to the Land Rover experience. This is my third Range Rover, and I've had a Land Rover before that, and I don't think I really fully understood what the vehicles could do until I had the chance over here in this type of uh, situation. I think it's a terrific experience.